When we talk about the Apothecons, the supposed ancient evil of the Aether story, there was always one thing that I couldn't understand. How could a humanoid race like the Old Keepers or Vril Ya ever evolve into the enormous monstrous abominations that we call the Apothecons? The timeline explains this with a single word, evolution. Trapped in the Dark Aether, the Corrupted Keepers contort and evolve over eons, ultimately becoming the Apothecons. This just didn't really work for me. This is simply not how evolution works. For evolution, one needs natural selection, or survival of the fittest. And how can we have that in a realm without physical matter, and we're all beings serve the same hive mind? Apart from that, we do encounter more humanoid apothecon types that resemble the handhead species of Dr. Monty or the Shadow Man, and also the corrupted keepers as apothecons. How can it be that they changed relatively little over time? whereas some proto-keepers have changed into giant, universe-consuming worms, the cephalopods. So here's the thing. I think the creatures that we name the Apothecons are not necessarily the Apothecons. Of course, they are classified under the name of that faction. But what I mean is that they have a different origin than the defeated proto-keepers or the fallen angels under the Shadow Man. In H.P. Lovecraft's Cthulhu Mythos, the most powerful entities in the multiverse are the Great Old Ones, the Outer Gods of the Other Hells, and the Elder Gods. These are enormous creatures existing outside our observable universe and in the space between spaces. However, their great weakness is the fact that they cannot form a stable and consistent form of matter in our three-dimensional space-time. This is why they have not yet dominated our universe, and why they even have any dealings with humanity. Humans need to provide them with something whether it's opening a door on this side of reality, or providing a part of us, such as our souls. While the story of the Protokeepers sounds really similar to the mythos of the Vril Yah, uh, ancient aliens, and even some passages of the Bible, the existence and abilities of the Great Apothecons seems to resemble more the story of the Lovecraftian Elder Gods and their inability to enter our universe by themselves. By the Shadow Man, they are referred to as their overlords. By the Keepers, they are called the Elder Gods. This is further confirmed in Dr. Toten, where the Apothecon corpse on the bottom of the ocean is referred to as an Elder God, and in the Shadows of Evil Cipher, stating that the Elders continue to seed space-time, which refers to the entities blasting rocks of 115 to Earth. The word Elder God relates to something old, something ancient even for the Keepers. What does this say about their backstory? The deciphering of the Apothecon language clearly shows that the Apothecons function under a hive mind. Prior to the civil war of Agartha between the Proto-Keepers and before the schism between Dr. Monty and the Shadow Man, the Elder Gods already existed. They were already out there, in the space between spaces, the Aether. At some point, the Proto-Keepers came in contact with them by constructing the Aether Pyramid device, initially honoring them as Elder Gods. The hive mind then corrupted some of the keepers and made them part of the collective. The corrupted keepers now called them their overlords, and the schism between Monty and the Shadow Man began. So the Elder Gods and the corrupted keepers now act under the same mind and have the same interests, but their origin is different, and they are different types of entities. And in the recently translated Gorod Krovi cipher, the full name of the Shadow Man's alter ego was stated to be Tony Hale Wrapped, which can be unscrambled to the name Nyarlathotep. Nyarlathotep in the Lovecraft stories is the harbinger of the Outer Gods. Since he is a shapeshifter, he can wander around the world as a false prophet, and he gathers human followers to convince them that the world is going to end. This is actually similar to how the Shadow Man tricks the four characters of Shadows of Evil to follow his will, in his words, to prevent the destruction of their world. In Lovecraft Mythos, the Outer Gods actually need Nyarlathotep as their messenger, because they themselves cannot exist in the physical world of matter. Because the Shadowman was once a Keeper with a clear physical shape, he can simply enter Morg City where the Elder Gods require a set of rituals before they can do the same. These rituals involved the sacrifice of four souls and the opening of the Apothecon Rift Stone, similar to how Lovecraft's Outer Gods require human souls to access our universe. So the Elder Gods are older than the Apothecons, and even more ancient than the Keepers. This is why Dr. Monty refers to the Apothecons as the most powerful entities in all the existences that ever existed. This is what Samantha refers to when she noticed the Elder God entities during her time in the Pyramid. The madness will swallow your pride! Something far more terrible than you lies here! 
So the Shadow Man is not the head of the Apothecons. He's merely their mouth to speak through, or their pawn. Before the Corrupted Keepers turned into what Monty calls the Apothecons, and before the existence of the Shadow Man, the Elder Gods were already there. Though despite the defeat and banishment of the Apothecons at the end of Revelation, the Elder Gods are still out there somewhere. Yeah.